Hello! Today I'm going to talk about the Intersect Analysis tool. And to show this, I have this little animation here, which is just a sphere with some tube going through it. And I'm going to use the Intersection Analysis tool to emit particles from wherever the sphere gets intersected. So let's drop down and Intersect Analysis. And let's take the sphere here. And I'm just going to start with one of the tubes. So I've got it plug that into here and let's see what we get. And we can see we get a warning here and if we look at the warning it tells us that we need a triangle mesh. So I'm just going to drop down a divide here and now you can see the warning is gone. And we can see we get some points if we, we template this. You can see we get points wherever the sphere gets intersected. So I'm going to put this to segment instead. So now we have segment and we just use this segment to scatter some points. So I'm going to drop down a scatter. So here's my scatter because I want to vary how many points we're going to have here. So I'm going to put a random dollar $f for the frame and I'm going to multiply this with 100. And I'm also going to animate the seed. So I'm going to put dollar $f here. And now we have these random points getting scattered on the segments. Let's drop down the dot network. So here is the dot network, and let's go in here. And I want a pop solver and a pop object, pop source. And so let's connect this in here, object in here, and the source in here. And for the source, I'm going to use all points, and I'm going to use the first context geometry because we connected it to the first port. Let's see what we get. I can see we have particles, but nothing happens because we have no force. So I'm going to drop down a pop force, and I'm going to put this to minus six, and we get this. It's not very nice, uh, but we can make it a little bit more interesting by put some noise. On it, so I'm going to put 0.5, and I'm going to put some roughness on it. It's still not perfect, but it's getting a bit better. So the next thing I want to do is that I want to have a velocity. I want it to do a little squirt and not just fall straight down when it emits. Uh, and if we go to the pop source, we can see on the attribute that you can use an inherited velocity, which means that we can put a velocity on the points, and then the pop source will pick that up. So let's do that. Let's go out here again. So we have these segments and doesn't have anything. And the place we can get the right direction is from the normals from the sphere. So if we look at the sphere, this would be perfect because the normal is pushing it outwards. First of all, I want to have point normals. On this, I'm going to put down the normal up and I'm going to put this to point. Now we have point normals. Uh, and then I'm going to use an attribute transfer. I'm going to take the points and then I'm going to pick up the normals. So I'm going to I want the normals. Uh, and now if we look here, you can see that we have normals on the points here. Also, I want to have some variation in the velocities. So I'm going to drop down a wrangle and I'm going to say attribute v, which is the attribute for velocity. And that is equal to attribute normal. And then I want to have some variations. I'm going to multiply this and do a fit 0, 1, which is the same thing as a fit, but it's assumed that the value is between 0 and 1. So I'm going to do a random here, which will give us a value between 0 and 1. And I'm going to use the point position and the frame as a, as a seed in the random. And then I'm going to set it between 1 and 2. That is my range. So if we go back to the DOPSIM now and turn this off, you can see that we have a velocity. And one another thing I'm going to do actually is that because these are just falling endlessly and creates a lot of points, so I'm going to drop down a pop kill and I'm going to delete by a bounding box. So let's do a bounding box. It can be, I'm going to do it 50, 50. And I want to have it down maybe 10. Uh, now if we play this, we're going to see that the particles 
gets killed off by this boundary box. Perfect. So the next thing we have now is that it's not colliding with the object, it's just falling straight down. So let's bring in all the objects. So if we do a static object, and then I'm going to use use deforming geometry because we want to evaluate it on every frame because this is an animation with the uh, tubes going in. And let's pick up the geometry. So if we go up here, out geo, and then we're going to merge this together. So we're going to drop down a merge and connect this in here. And here the order is very important. We have left inputs affect right inputs, so we need to change the order. So this affects this. So now we can see we have the geometry in here, and we also have some collisions. Perfect. So the only thing we have to do now is to bring in the rest of the tubes. So I'm going to go out here again, and I'm going to have another merge in which I'm just going to take these guys. It's a bit messy now. And then I'm going to connect that into the divide. So let's see what this gives us. If we go in, go back into the drop sim, uh, we can see yes, it goes in, yes, it goes in, and yes, it goes in. But you notice that it starts really thick, and then at the end, all the streams get very sparse. And the reason for that is, if I look at the scatter node, it's always the same value. It doesn't care about that it's more, more holes. It's just going to make this number, which is 31 points on this frame. The way we can get around that is to just count how many holes we have. And we can do that by drop down a connectivity, like so. And I'm going to check the primitives. And here in this attribute, I'm going to say hole. And what we can see if we go to the spreadsheet is that every hole gets its own attribute value. So I have hole 0 to 3. And because we have that, we can drop down use an for each loop. So I'm going to drop down a for each loop here. I'm going to put the scatter in the middle. If we look at this bottom node, we have merged each iteration. So every time it iterates, it's going to merge the points together. And we have this piece attribute, and I'm going to use our hole attribute here. Now it's going to go through, for every hole, it's going to do a new scatter and then merge it together with the rest of them. So now if we go back, we can see that all the streams have a similar thickness. Yep, yeah, that's it. So I hope that you found this useful, and see you next time.